Hello everyone. I am back with another interesting and very useful video for my fellow programming community members. It doesn't matter if you are a fresher or a seasoned player, this informative video is for you. I am sure after this, you will be able to write a killer programmer resume. In recent times, as companies are opting for remote work options, having an eye-catchy resume is a must. As such, programming can be done from anywhere in the world. But there will be a lot more competition than before and you need to be on top of that resume pile. How? Let's see. Before we get into the details, here is a small brief about me. I own an IT company in India and have been working as a CTO in a US company based out of New Jersey. I am also a corporate trainer and an active Udemy instructor. I have reviewed more resumes than you can imagine and have helped thousands of candidates with training, development and resume building skills. So I am sure all my experience will help you in crafting the best version of your resume. Before we begin articulating the skills and strength in your resume, let's talk about the format. You must understand that you can choose whatever format you like. We will majorly discuss how you can make your resume technically strong and eye-catching with a few tips on presentation backed by my 23 plus years real-world experience in the programming industry. The format is merely a formality if your skills are top-notch. Having said that, I would recommend following the reverse chronological order that is latest projects come first followed by the previous years to draft your resume as it works best in our industry. If you are experienced, this resume format will showcase your strengths, skills and your latest project details right on top. It makes the whole thing searchable and saves the recruiters valuable time. If you are somewhat junior, start with your education section and then show all the things you have done till now. Freelancing work, side projects, remote work details, any consultancy which you have done, any awards which you have received so far, all these things you put in the beginning if you are at a junior level. Now moving forward, how will you introduce yourself? How do you grab recruiters attention? by crafting a super impressive introduction paragraph making the recruiter believe that you are the one. So let's assume we have Mr. Iron Man preparing his resume who can be a web developer, mobile UI UX developer but we are considering him as a full stack developer so that we can include front end, database, back end, server side and other aspects of development if the person is a full stack developer. He has chosen the reverse chronological order. Now the introduction will include your full name, email address, contact number along with a couple of lines about you. For example, Iron Man is a React Angular mean or MERN stack developer currently working as a tech lead. So here we are showing the current designation also while introducing. Now in continuation with this introduction, you can mention your professional summary which in this case will include experience of HTML, CSS, bootstrap, SAS or less kind of preprocessor, in short front-end technologies. Then JavaScript or jQuery, maybe React, Angular or Vue.js kind of front-end frameworks. PHP, ASP.NET, Java, Node.js kind of server-side technologies. MS SQL, Oracle, MySQL, MongoDB or any other RDBMS or NoSQL databases. Project management tools like Jira and Agile methodology exposure. Version control system knowledge like SVN or maybe GitHub. Project deployment exposure and testing tools and any other third party component or components or maybe libraries like chart or analytical components or grid controls or any other technical achievement can be part of this section as a well-crafted professional summary which will increase the recruiter's interest in your application. If you are a junior or a fresher, a resume objective is what you should use. Your resume objective should mention how you can add value to the company rather than mentioning that you are hardworking and loyal and all those heavy keywords of self-praise. 
Generally, we see people who do not have experience. They write all such things. Of course, you can write your technical achievements or maybe project achievements during your academics. That will be an added advantage to your resume as a fresher. Now, next is technical skills. This section will give a quick glimpse of what all do you know. In short, these are the keywords IT companies or recruiters are looking for. Don't mention all the skills you know at first. Mention those in which you are an expert. You might be familiar with five languages, but expert in two. Let's take Mr. Iron Man's example. He being full stack developer, how should he portray his skills? First thing is language. Now let's say JavaScript, maybe TypeScript, Java or C++ and for a database language that is SQL. So these are the languages which is known by this person. There may be many other languages but JavaScript is coming first because that is the strength. So you should also think of the sequence whether you write a language or any other topic. Make sure that the thing which you are good at should come first. Here I can put server side technologies list where I'll say Node.js, maybe you can say ASP.NET, Java, PHP. But here because Mr. Iron Man is a full stack developer with mean or mern stack, that's what we have considered. So here I'm putting Node.js, Express, Handlebars, REST API, any framework which is an additional library like OAuth, maybe JWT or let's say a file uploading package like Multer used in Node.js or maybe GraphQL. So you can get an idea what all you can put in this list. Then I'll put a separate list of all client side technologies where I can say React that is from which version to which version the person has worked. Angular also if is known to you, maybe Vue.js or any other framework. Then additional libraries which you have used with those main frameworks like maybe Redux, NGRX, jQuery is again something which shows your experience because if you have worked for more than 10 years, you must be knowing jQuery. So you can put that also. Additional UI or presentation libraries like D3JS which actually helps you to show the charts. And D material like UI UX libraries used with React or Angular that you can put. And HTML, CSS, maybe some functional libraries like Lodash you can put here. Any Ajax call libraries like Axios you can put here. Then comes the database. What all databases you know. So you put RDBMS or NoSQL databases. Here I am putting MySQL, MongoDB, MS SQL. So you can put a list of all the databases here. You can also mention about cloud environment or the servers on which you have configured the application. It might be Microsoft Azure, AWC, EC2 or Heroku or any other server which you have used to deploy an application. You can mention that also. IDEs or development environments like what all tools you have used, VS Code, maybe Atom, WebStorm, NetBeans, Android SDK, whatever you have used so far. But if you have mastered something, you should put that list also. Now this operating system is something which some people write, I do not recommend. Unless let's say there is a job description where the person is expecting that you should know Unix shell script also, right? Then it makes some sense to write operating system. Otherwise it's not a good idea to have operating system here. So we'll not keep it in our resume at least. Then you can also mention version control or source control systems like TFS, GitHub, SVN or any other which you are aware of. You can also mention project management tools like Jira, Trello. You can also focus on your capabilities to work with a team and that too with a team who implements project management very well, especially agile methodology. You can also mention automated testing tools. If you have worked so far, you can say Mocha, Chai, maybe Jasmine, Karma, Jest, and there are many tools which you can mention here. Also mentioning all your skills might be an overkill. Always remember to check the job description or the roles and responsibilities before applying so that you can tailor your resume's skill section accordingly. Remember, most employers mention good to have skills. These might be technologies that you might not be fully aware of, but you can always try and draft your resume in such a way that you focus on the good to have section as well. If your skills match with recruiters requirements, you will be hearing from them sooner than expected. After all this you have mentioned, 
next thing you should mention is about your work experience your work experience section has to be to the point but should give the gist of your projects in totality you must keep this in mind while drafting this section that the recruiter would be more interested in knowing how well you did that job rather than what you did for example you may write developed projects on react platform simple or instead a better way can be you can write that you created single page application in react using react router and you communicated with the rest api and you implemented token based api or you may have used some library like axios to connect with the api you may have used google material right or any other extra libraries which you have used in the project that you should emphasize on which shows your capabilities of working on various aspects of software development life cycle so now this second one gives more insight about what you did as compared to the first one if you have gone through the job post and believe that the responsibilities and requirements asked are something that you have done before then you must tweak your resume by listing them in your current or past projects make sure you understand the concepts or you can learn them quickly otherwise it will be a disaster at the time of interview if you don't have knowledge of the required or good to have skills for example somebody has asked that good to have d3js now d3js is something which if you are an experienced guy spending 20 25 hours you can certainly crack a good level of interview so if it is required in the job description it depends on how good you are at learning new technologies and upgrade yourself then comes the education section listing your education credentials is easy just mention your highest degree of education that should include your subject major name and location of your institution college or university along with correct graduation dates You can mention other certifications such as coding boot camps or online courses. Such certifications will especially help if you are a self-taught programmer or at a junior level. Now comes the credential section. Remember when I told you I have seen more resume than you can imagine? Well, 75% of them looked similar. Even to this day, identical resumes are common thing. That's a problem. How do you make sure your resume stands out? Do you have a website? How about mentioning your blog page or your journal publications, your online portfolio? Here you should mention a few recent and creative projects that you have completed with their links. Or maybe put your GitHub or Stack Overflow link. Stack Overflow participation in Q&As will be a huge plus for you which might fetch you extra points in the interviews. mention your social media profiles social media profiles like linkedin and github have become almost mandatory for programming roles candidates with such credentials definitely stand out from the rest and have a higher chance of getting fast interview calls if you are a fresher mention your academic projects with their domains like financial healthcare or maybe educational industry It generally happens that in the academics you have a project which allows you to work on ERPs or some other domain you can certainly mention that also because your domain knowledge is also important for the company who is hiring you this section is recommended only if you have such credentials please do not try to create anything overnight just for the sake of keeping it chances are high that they'll skip your profile even if you are a good fit if they find anything suspicious about your credentials now we have come to the last but important aspect which is often ignored by candidates and that is cover letter well i won't just talk about resumes only a cover letter is as important as any other section that i have mentioned so far a good cover letter tells that story which your resume won't i get emails with pfa written in the body what should i assume out of it Rather, I'll open a resume that has a cover letter instead. That's what most of the recruiters do too. Remember that a cover letter that matches with your resume gives you an added advantage over other candidates. With that, I'll conclude. 
I hope you will have a better and clear understanding of how to craft the best version of your resume by yourself. If you still feel it is a daunting task, give me a shout out in the comment section and we'll connect to bring you up to speed. Of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. More informative videos are on the way. Thank you.